So with time at finally releasing over here on the JP version of the game and her being rather good, there's been a lot of conversations being started about who is the best Buster AoE servant. And the one that I've been seeing most commonly thrown around is her versus Kukul Khan, which does make sense. They are both extra class servants. They both do really good damage. They both have ways of kind of doing their good damage. Kukul Khan using her special damage mods and time at having her ability to build up as the fight goes on. They both have some applicability and harder content as well. They're not just farmers. So it makes sense why you would compare the two. Now, there are other comparisons we could make between Tiamat and say like Morgan or Melusine or, you know, Arjuna Alter even, right? There's a lot of other people you could compare her to, but this is the one that I've been talking a lot with my chat about over on Twitch, which by the way, shameless plug down in the description down below, if you wanna be a part of some of those conversations. And this is the one that we've been talking about a lot. And I think I've finally settled on an answer. I think it's actually closer than most people do think, but I do actually have myself an answer. After I did the big think, I finally came to a conclusion. But before we begin, if you have not already, make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel for that sweet daily FGO content where your boy is always going to be out here making sure that you are informed on what is going on on both versions of the game. But without further ado, let's go ahead and just start talking about this. Now, I think the main thing that we're going to be talking about in this video is kind of like how much damage they do and how good they are as wave clearers slash farmers because that's probably what you're going to be using them as, as like their primary role. Because if we want to talk about using them in more difficult content, while I do think Tiamat is good in some of those scenarios, I do think Kukul Khan actually does beat her out at the end of the day. Not to say that you can't use Tiamat in more difficult content and not that she won't perform rather well. I just think that Kukul Khan's kit is just built a little bit better for taking on some of those more difficult bosses because things like this are very nice. Like being able to buy yourself a free turn of not getting crit being able to negate your enemy's ability to just heal themselves at all. The AoE stun is nice, although it is only at 60% chance. So if you're not fighting like three people, which is where this is the most powerful, right? Because even though it's lower, you have three separate 60% procs to try to stun people. If you're not fighting those guys, like if you're only doing a one-on-one -on -one fight, it gets significantly worse because your chances of hitting somebody go a lot lower. The curse, no idea what that is, <laughs> what that's doing over here. I'm not going to lie. But then this is also very nice for the party, right? Like being able to give some of your other supports uh, and NP and HP because unless you're using Merlin, you don't have a whole lot of sustain in Buster comps. And keep in mind, Koyinskaya does have the ability to charge your other party members NP on her own NP. So it's not just a beat stick, it's also really good for making sure Tiamat can get back to her NP. Plus, you're gonna make sure that, you know, Tamamovich actually does a little bit of damage by giving her a fat NP damage buff. Plus, the fact that she does debuff cleanse herself and she can seal the enemy skills, those are very nice things that Tiamat does have. Although, I would like to see her have some hardline survivability, which is what Kukul Khan has. In fact, she pretty much has like the best survivability in the game because you might see this and be like, that's just a buster buff, or not a buster buff, but that's an invincibility buff. How is that gonna be like the best thing in the game? Well, because of this, it turns into the solemn defense buff, meaning there's pretty much nothing that can get around Kukul Khan aside from like, I don't know, removing the buff straight up. Uh, that's like really the only way to get around her. And she also has two really good damage mods that are going to be a bit better in more difficult fights than just time at, you know, kind of building up and doing more damage because this threat against humanity, this is very, very good. It shines very well in these difficult content stages because threats against humanity are some of the more difficult enemies in the game. And Earth Attribute is a very wide net of people that you're able to hit with that. So Kukul Khan is who I think has the edge if you want to use them in more difficult content, but also don't misunderstand, you can definitely use time at in more difficult content. While I'm saying that the special damage mod is probably going to perform a bit better, that doesn't mean time at's going to perform any worse. I believe it was like a year or two ago when I was talking about um, uh, Musashi versus, I believe it was Berserker Ibuki on who's the better looper. I was like, well, Ibuki being a better looper does not mean that Musashi got any worse. It just means we got a better servant, right? Just because there's a servant that might perform a little bit better doesn't mean the other servant is just like absolute dog water. It's like, no, Tiamat's still really, really good. I just think Kukul Khan has a little bit of the edge. So let's go ahead and just start talking about a little bit of this damage. So I have pulled up over here. I have a calc that I did for uh, Tiamat over here because as you guys may or may not know, she does build up her damage over here. So as the fight goes on, she's gonna be doing more and more damage because don't let this fool you. Uh, Tiamat does not start at higher levels of damage than Kukul Khan because I know it looks like she starts really low, but this is actually where she starts because this is like guaranteed 100% because of Koyanskaya's skill right here. Koyanskaya drops 20 stars whenever she fires the skill onto Kukul Khan, right? And that guarantees the two damage skills. That guarantees her 
first skill over here that costs uh, 10 stars, right, for the attack buff and everything. And then it guarantees like the buster buff and the NP damage buff and all this other good stuff over here. And you don't need it for this one. You don't need the additional 10 stars over here because you already get the battery, right? This is the most important part, right? Unless you're in more difficult content, then you might need some of this stuff and you might need the extra 10 stars. But again, we're talking for like general farming. These are guaranteed. Like this is where she starts out. And so for the first wave, Tiamat is going to be doing slightly less damage than Kukulkan. But as you guys will see, she actually does build up rather fast, right? Being able to do a little bit more damage after stacking both of her NPs. Like this is her wave three damage and it is almost doing 10K more um, than Kukulkan over here. And then even if we do just reduce this down to like 90% for the second NP, because remember it does proc first, she's still doing about more damage. Like she's still doing a couple K more. So time at is like really really good and easy free damage plus let's also not forget that this is not taking into account that she should be super effective when you are using her unless you're going to try to bring Tiamat to like some saber fight or something weird along those lines she should also be super effective against riders casters assassins and well i would say berserkers but kuku khan is also super effective against them i mean they also can hit foreigners but i don't think you're really going to run into foreigners too too often in farming nodes but if you do hey that's another plus so yeah Tiamat is going to be doing a lot of really good easy free damage and because she also hits really hard if there is like a stray saber a stray archer lancer like someone that she's not super effective against because buster comps just do so much damage and like if the enemy's not that big you might actually not even care that much because remember in buster comps you're not trying to get overkill and you're not trying to loop your np in a traditional sense you're just trying to clear the wave right so if you find like some, I don't know, like 50k saber, she might be able to clear it, um, especially if you have to use like a face card or two. But it's just interesting that like because of how buster comps work, the alter ego complaint that I usually have for farming servants doesn't apply as much to her because she can maybe brute force her way through some of those weaker enemies that she's not super effective against. But here's where things I think tip a little bit for Kukul Khan. It's these special damage mods over here. Now, the third against humanity one, I don't think this one is like all that real in farming notes because i'll just show people that don't like know all the tags and everything off the top of their head that way they can at least get a um vague idea of who's going to be in here but these are like not going to be like common people that you're really going to run into all that often i don't think it's all that real of a trait to find in farming especially because i mean if we just go all the way down here these are just like all the bosses of the game like you don't you're not gonna find like um oh what's his name serranos like just randomly in some farming note it'd be hilarious but yeah, these are like bosses. <laughs> you do not find these people in normal farming nodes. So it's kind of dead unless, I don't know, there's like exactly Oberon or like Yang or something in some random farming node, but it's not very common. But this earth one over here, this one is really nice. This is a very good damage mod for farming. And this is why I think things do tip a little bit also in like kind of a more balanced way for Kuku Khan as well, because this is a lot of servants. And because she is a foreigner, right, she could pretty much hit everybody here neutral, which means bring her to anybody there and she'll absolutely cook. But it doesn't just apply to the servants. It also applies to all of these enemies. And now aside from the threat against humanity, these guys are common, right? Like how often have you fought like wyverns, dragons, skeletons, these guys from Lost Belt 4? Like you've fought these guys before like you will encounter them and we will continue to encounter them as time goes on and look they're even adding more enemies from other events and well, i don't want to spoil where some of those guys are from in case i have only na viewers but look we're getting more people that fit on this tag in the future as well so it really does tip things very well into kukul khan's favor because then as soon as she gets a singular damage mod which again with the earth uh special damage mod you can get that against anybody right you can get it against any of those guys we looked at you could have it for all three nodes right you could fight like dragons and dragons then like couple of dragons with i don't know siegfried is the boss is siegfried on earth hold on let me, let me double check before i say something. yeah siegfried is on earth okay yeah you can then you can fight siegfried with like two dragons next to him and he was she was super effective against all of those and she was just blowing time man's damage out of the water with that but again even though it is a common trait it's not like you're gonna be guaranteed to get this every single time right like i do also understand that it is kind of like situational and again if you're fighting someone that you're super effective against because you know to be fair a lot of those dragons are like riders and stuff tiamat would also be super effective against them so she wouldn't be like that far behind on like terms of damage and whatnot right like she'd be very very close so it's just one of those things that like, I'm sorry if this is like a little anticlimactic. I do prefer like Kukul Khan a little bit because I do like my extra special damage mods. I like my extra utility in my farmers, but I do not think Tiamat is like 
that far behind, if really behind at all. Like, I think they're both very close because in the same vein that you could say like, oh, you'll run into like people with Earth attribute X amount of times. I feel like the same would be true for how many people uh, time at is going to be super effective against, right? If not, maybe even more with the alter ego thing. And again, while I would say that this class would normally hold her back if she was like, say, an art servant or a quick servant, because they really need to get that overkill on enemies to loop their NP. Tiamat doesn't need to, and she only needs to take out the enemy. She does not care if there's like a saber as long as she can nuke it with her NP. So I think it's very close. I do have a slight preference uh, for Kukulkan in terms of farming. And then I have a little bit more of a um, preference for her when it comes to more difficult content. I do think Kukulkan is like, a little bit better than Tiamat when it comes to more difficult content. I, I do slant over to her a lot more, uh, but as, when it comes to farming, I mean, if you were like, oh no, Kukulkan and Tiamat are out at the same time, who are you gonna pull for as your farmer? I'd be like, it doesn't matter. Like, who do you think is cuter? <laughs> Go pull for that one. And in that case, I would probably pull for Tiamat, which I uh, already did. And I'm gonna be trying to go in for NP2. So wish me luck on that one, boys. But with all that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Maybe there's something I missed. Maybe you just thought all the points in this video are absolutely garbage. Feel free to just flame me in the comments down below. If you were like, nope, ZTL, I think you're a big dummy. I think this point was absolute hot dog water. You could just get me in the comments, right? You could just go after me over there. <laughs> but look, try to at least be a little respectful. Try to be a little, little nice. Don't, don't go too hard on me now. But <laughs> with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace, light guys.